Okay guys, uh, this is a kind of an off-the-cuff tutorial on how to, to import a custom weapon as well as creating a custom weapon skin if you just want a custom weapon skin. This is also the, the uh, tutorial to go to. I'm going to do this on Blender and 3ds Max. So first thing to do is import your, your own sword, whatever you have dagger. I just found this online for free somewhere. It's not mine. So let's open, go to meshes, and let's find a template. Basically look for uh, because this is the easiest way to do it. Right? Look for a template NIF file that is very similar to whatever you're, you're creating. So if you're looking for a bow, get a bow, great axe, get a great axe, etc. And you can even be even more lazy and choose a NIF file that already has the material. So if you're looking for a Daedric looking sword, you, you can have, you can, the ebony cube map is already there for you. You can just copy over the textures and it'll have it in there. I'm going to export Dwarven Dagger, right? So then go to Dwarven Dagger here. This is the thing you just exported. Uh, I don't care about the scabbard. You can, if you have a scabbard, of course, don't delete this. Uh, although it doesn't, uh, I don't know that it matters or not. Uh, I think it's just that you have SCB here, so if, just make sure you tag it as SCB and, it'll, and if we'll find it if you have a scabbard. But I'm deleting the scabbard. So now, uh, all of this, I'm just going to export the whole thing. So export OBJ. And import that. So you have your dagger. Now, the thing is, you have edge blood too, and what that is is the mesh that acts as the film on which the blood decal is going to show. So you hit someone with your sword, it'll show blood on this portion of the model. And of course that's easy if you want to uh, add an edge blood mesh. So you go to edit mode on your mesh, right, and just I'm going to be lazy and just do something to this effect, right? So you need to hit uh, selection visible down here to select all of them behind and then control I, X, delete faces. And there you have your, of course you have to duplicate, so shift D and then do it. But that, that's when you, ha that's for your edge blood. It doesn't really matter as far as this. So if you do want edge blood, just have your the the uh, edge mesh ready. And after that, it's just the same thing. You just import the, the mesh and move it over to the particular Nitri shape. It's not that big of a deal. The main thing you want to do is make sure that your mesh is lined up here with uh, this da the dagger or whatever, particularly the handle. The blade doesn't matter so much because the most awkward thing is if your NPC or character is holding it, but it, the, the, the handle looks weird. So the handle is the main issue. I'm going to click Control I. If you haven't triangulated, go to Edit Mode, Control T. Then we're going to export it to OBJ. Once you have that, go to the, the NIF template you're using, import your mesh. Now there's two ways to do this. Uh, the first way is basically you have the need to reshape data and what you can do is just copy it over. So copy, paste over, that's one way. 
the other way is to replace the knee tree shape itself it doesn't matter um, the main thing to look at if you're copying over the, the knee tree shape data is there might be changes to the geometry orientation within the knee tree shape that you have to change so this is scaled really low so you have to scale up in this case but we're just going to move it over so this is knee tree shape 23 so replace knee tree shape 23 with knee tree shape 28 not and i node 27 uh it's not a difference except for optimization so if you copy an i node over it doesn't matter but put knee tree shape so 28 that's our knee tree shape the more important thing is num uv sets have to be set to 4097 and then you have to uh, right click on the knee tree shape or on the whole vs fade node and update tangent space because you that sets up your normals right if you have that to zero and you haven't updated your knee tree shape properties it's not going to show the normals and your text your mesh will just look flat okay so next thing is to move the vs lighting shader property over from the dwarven dagger and this is uh basically the render configuration if you will and the texture set along with it we don't need this anymore so delete control delete and the and i know it doesn't matter so i'm going to do, so at this point if you have edge blood you do the same thing right you import it rep, rep, make sure to move all this stuff over here so the easier thing to do again would just be to paste over the knee tree shape data because of this stuff you you'll have to change that with your new mesh if not just do the same process right import knee tree shape then this knee string extra data alpha property shader and texture property all that needs to be moved over to your knee tree shape so extra data is under here copy move that over and then control delete on the original i'm not using edge blood because i don't care this is just an example so now if you're modifying the weapon skin this is where you start you have your you have opened a mesh from skyrim or wherever and this is what you have so now now let's go to Photoshop, if you I think you have to use Photoshop. I don't know if uh, there's another NVIDIA plugin, but basically the link is in the description, right? To the, to the N NVIDIA DDS plugin, because you need that to open DDS files. So open texture packages, BSA for Skyrim, I'm going to go to uh, so this is if you're modifying the skin if you're not modifying the skin uh, give me a moment and we'll continue then open wherever it is that the textures are referring to so dwarven dagger and find that and export it done right then I'm opening the textures for our sword. If you're opening textures to modify, to make a new weapon skin or as a template on which to create a new weapon skin, find the stuff that you exported. It's all there. If you, the thing about it is if you're just going to modify the base color it's still going to have the normal map there even if you remove the the specular which doesn't change it too much the normal map is still going to have its patterns right so if you don't if you don't want to bake a normal map 
if you're making new weapon skin, you need something like Crazy Bump, which I will link to to create a normal map. But if you're creating a weapon skin, here's how you do it. So in render, I have my source, my uh, Skyrim source files linked. So data, textures, and data. I don't remember which one's the right one. Anyway, probably this one. So yeah, that, that's most likely. So if you want to set, to basically do like, have a way to quickly modify your texture, save it, and then look at it. That's the way to do it. Uh, because for, and we'll, I'll show you in a moment. But, so here we are. This is the specular. We're gonna save this. If it doesn't have an alpha channel, Select no alpha. If not interpolated alpha, it doesn't really matter, but I know it says that, but I don't, it doesn't have an alpha, so it doesn't matter. Okie dokie. So once we have that saved, move your DDS files that you just saved over to the place. It doesn't, ha I recommend you put them in uh, somewhere that's not the vanilla place. Maybe make your own folder to put all your stuff in, just to be organized. But put them somewhere, and then on in your NIF file that we're modifying, uh, just reference them, right? So diffuse, this is diffuse, slot, base color, whatever. Uh, that's your normal and that's your specular. If you don't have the specular, just remove this. Doesn't matter. Here's the bronze cube map. Uh, if you want a different cube map, just export all the cube maps and because you have the NVIDIA DDS plugin, um, you can go to cube maps and look at all the cube maps and it's basically a film it kind of modifies the tint uh, and, and adds like a reflection based on this property. It, this is kind of a, a tutorial in its own right. So that's all I'm going to say. Anyway, it doesn't matter, but it'll probably look weird without like a more appropriate cube map. So I'm just going to put oil, see how that looks. So this is basically it, right? Um, now, here's the thing. There's also a first person. Ultimately, it doesn't matter if it's just a normal weapon. You can use the same mesh for both. Here's how to do it in, in uh, 3ds Max. It's just really quickly. It's basically the same thing. So let's go to shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Uh, so let's go to our OBJ file here. We had Dwarven Dagger. Let's import Dwarven Dagger with all the materials and stuff. Doesn't matter. Random Dagger, that's our, that's our mesh. And it's just the same thing, right? So, so you have this, um, once it's aligned, delete it, everything except this, and then go ahead and export uh, 3DS or OBJ. and then just do the same process. The orientation may be different and you might have to change it. The other thing you can do is say, if you have the NIF tools, um, you can just export, of course, and go to Net Immerse and export as a Net Immerse, and all the stuff will be there. And you can do uh, vertex colors in that case, right? So you, you can preserve vertex colors that way, but there's not much of a difference. Okay, I have Skyrim loaded in Creation Kit and I'm making a new package. So just select Skyrim in data and open your package or make a new one by just selecting Skyrim. And I'm going to Rift and World. But anyway, 
So let's put our first person uh, static. So this isn't static. This is static. Uh, first person. I mean, AA first. Uh, where are you? Random sword. The thing is, you can have a first person mesh that is different. Uh, ultimately, it doesn't matter necessarily, but so if you want to distinguish first person view from third person view of the mesh, then you have a different mesh for that. But I'm just, it doesn't matter in this case. So that's your static. Now we have to go to weapon. Let's find Dwarven Dagger, right? So go to Art and Sound and select Random Sword. So here's our uh, random. It looks kind of oily. It has that weird tint. So that's the cube map working, but I'm not going to change it. Select your first person object too. Remember to rename it. Press OK. Press well. So here's all the stuff to configure it. Press OK. Yes. And put it in game. So drag it, drop it in game.